Hello and welcome to Vets Play D&D Surprise Saturday Edition with us, the Vets that Play D&D sometimes. I'm your DM, Brandon. Uh, we have a bit of a crew with us today up in that top, le top left corner. Uh, we have Jordan, who is not playing the Paladin Fate. My overlay isn't updating at all for some reason. He instead will be playing... Um, wow, my brain's up. Surge. Surge. With an Echo Knight. Next oh. to... <laughs> it's Serge. Sarge. <laughs> next to Jordan, we have Sam, who is still playing the Barbarian Tashi. Uh, down next to me, we have Emmy, who is not playing Emil. Emil is no longer with us. Instead, Emmy is playing Railer Haunt. Is that right? Perfect. Uh, and Railer is. What's your class, Railer? Oh, uh, we didn't share that, but it's a bard. Okay, thank you so much. Next to Emmy, we have Adam, who is not playing the Warlock uh, Wagat, because Wagat is no longer with us. He is instead playing the... Uh, uh, is it a rogue? Yeah, yep. the rogue Danzen Dustbrand. Uh, everyone else isn't here, so we won't even bother mentioning them, because, you know, whatever. Con girl. Losers. Right. <laughs> Lee he he zers. Uh, before we start, though, we do need to say viewer <laughs> discretion is advised. This campaign includes settings and concepts about war, inequity, and conflict that may make some viewers uncomfortable. Additionally, it is being played entirely by U.S. military veterans, and the content definitely reflects that. Uh, so if you've got thin skin and you don't like your feel goods hurting, probably go somewhere else. Um, finally, the views and opinions expressed by the individuals in this recording or stream are solely the views and opinions of the individuals in expressing them, and are not necessarily views or opinions shared by or reflective of those held by the University of Washington, Department of Veteran Affairs, or veterans as a whole. With that out of the way, I would like to start off the episode by uh, <coughs> giving a big shout out and thanks to our guest from a couple sessions ago. Um... Natalie, Natalie Graham, a journalist with The Stranger, she wrote a really cool piece about our group that did not uh, make us sound nearly as crazy as we are. So if you are interested in reading that, go ahead and check it out at The Stranger's website. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. Um, in the last couple of sessions... Put a link in, Brandon. Thanks, you rock. <clears throat> in the last couple of sessions, a uh, few dramatic things have happened. Our party was able to annihilate the village of New Dawn, and along with it, uh, hopefully, a rare gauss and their old friend, Ruger Hathama, along with the rest of the combatants of the Rising Dawn. However, in doing so, three of their team, Fate, Wagat, and Emil, were lost in the um, ensuing explosion. Upon arriving back, at um, Skyfont, uh, the party had a chance to um, receive gifts left by fate in case of his death. The next morning, um, they were greeted by... Um, I can't remember anything today, guys. I am so sorry. The guy, whose name is Gordikar. Gordikar. Uh, they were greeted by Gordikar, uh, who debriefed them and then proposed a potential solution. He has a way that the team might be able to bring back their allies. While the team was mulling this over, um, one of the new members, Danzin, set off to try to find the missing member of the party who had taken off in the middle of the night, Stony. We left with the team mulling over if they were going to take this mission. Danzen searching wildly in and out of the city to try to find Stony, and Stony using his druid powers to uh, entice slash cajole all the creatures he encountered into combat to the death. So far, <laughs> he had not died, leaving behind him a wake of dead creatures. So That's we find. Druid. The druid. <laughs> we find ourselves uh, following the trail of one Dan's and Dustbrand as he searches all over the wastes outside of Skyfont. Danzen, what are you seeing out there? Surprise, I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry, let me pull. I thought I could have read something for that. So... I don't think you wrote anything that I know of. Okay. Um, 
really I'm just yeah, trying to figure out no, uh, really I'm just trying to figure out at what point do you call it yeah no no Danzen, Danzen takes one look over the landscape sees that there is just too many options of places to go and he goes yeah that boy's lost and he uh, turns his little pony around and starts marching back to the uh, to the cat to the keep all right so as he's making his way back about how long do you think you're out searching um I want to say probably like it took him about 45 to 50 minutes to get to the outer gate to, to determine that he had taken a straightforward route to the gate and that nobody else on the outside of the gate knows where he went. Okay. So you make it however long it takes to get back. So you made it. You went just out outside the gate. You didn't go too far. Not really. No. All right. On a horse, you could easily make it back within the fifteen minutes. So you're probably back within that one hour. Okay. Um, as you ride back, you see Gordakar um, walking in. We're retconning a little bit because he walked in when you weren't there, but now you're there. Yeah. Look at that. Cool. Uh, Gordakar approaches, <coughs> enters the room, and. Uh, sees you coming in a little flushed having been rushing all over town uh, smelling faintly of horse did you find him hey, look I made it back uh, just in time for uh, for, for Mr. Gordikar. Uh what do you mean uh, longer than an hour uh, you're just you're just not on halfling time uh, it's an exponential curve um, Stoney will come back eventually I'm sure or he may be gone forever. Who knows? This is troubling. Well, I've sent some guards out to look for him as well. Hopefully, their combined efforts will be able to bring him back to ensure his well, safety. I can tell you. I can tell you, he's not in the city. That's uh, that's that's for certain. Is that so? Hmm. Yeah, he. You know, he leaves a pretty distinct trail. Everybody does. Uh, it's a little easier to track if you know the right questions to ask. Very interesting. If only I had prepared sending this morning. Well, have a seat. Walks in. Um, looks around the table. Well, without your friend Stony, uh, I'm unsure if you want to accept the mission I proposed. The two-part mission of both converting the dimensional anchor and hopefully bringing back your fallen comrades. Do you speak for him? Because if we, if your team is not able to, I do need to select another team to go and convert the acre as soon as possible. Are you, are you referring to me or uh, the whole the whole party? Okay. Petra kind of looks, just looks around. Um, she still seems pretty shaken. I didn't do that. I'm sorry. I clicked it. I didn't do that. No one's casting Thunder Wave. We're okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Good enough>. <laughs> <laughs> do what I want. Do you speak for him? No! <laughs> The, the room is very very quiet <laughs> uh, Serge <laughs> just speaks up and he's like I mean sure is there nothing else to do well as I said I either need to know if your team will accept this mission or if I need to prepare another team do you all need bereavement time well who's next who's the commander for the team right now. Well, we're between missions, there is no commander, but if you were to accept this mission, then he uh, looks at a roster, and for some reason all of our pinned messages have disappeared. Oh, it's Tashi. Okay. That sounds right. Is it and me? So... <laughs> is it but me? If, we do, if you do accept this mission, then the next one would be Tashi. Serge just looks over to the Cobalt and is like, it's up, up to you. Up, down. I'm really worried about Skate. 
though. I really want to know if Scape made it. I haven't heard any news. Scape was wandering around the base just when we, when we brought him back. Are you talking about the, the goat. emaciated goat? Remember? Yeah, we rescued that. Go that was my goat <laughs> that I oh. sent back here to wait for me. Well, where, no where one was escaped. informed of that. The goat was sent to the stables. I can probably have it brought back up for you. As long as I know Scape's okay, it's fine. I can go out to the stables myself and visit. I just, I've been looking for information on that for a little while. Well, no, I, we Ray, have... Ray, can I speak? So... Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, aren't you always free to begin again? Aren't you always free to believe in a new escape? Because when you find a place when your heart belongs... You're done. You could celebrate life together. That dog won't hunt. Yeah, I'm ready to be <laughs> CO if we need to. All right. If you, if you got a mission that needs done. Well, we yes, that is the mission we discussed before. But if you're mm -hmm. willing to take it on, then yes, I have a briefing oh. for you. Um, go ahead, pull out your pen, some paper, and prepare to copy. Oh, what was that? I'm down. The last thing I I I want is bereavement time because I'll just be alone with my thoughts. And <laughs> I'd much rather be killing stuff or infill exfilling stuff or well. You know, whatever's needed. Why not a little bit of all of that? At all. That's okay. So. That's my job. <laughs> what right. do y'all think? Are you okay with going on this mission? Or oh, sure, you betcha. Oh, sure, you betcha. Uh, well, yeah, I guess the only ones that would really potentially um, object are the ones who aren't here, um, and so I'm going to say that they uh, hesitantly agree. Um, because they want to get their minds off stuff. Rupus just looks kind of uncomfortable and awkward with the emotions that have been playing. Petra seems <laughs> not to know uh, the best thing to do, um, and so she is going to defer to you on this one. Uh, she is still shaken. Um, <clears throat> and then, of course, Stony is well gone. Stony. All right. So Gordakar uh, says, "All right. Well, then, take out your quills and parchments and prepare to copy. Please hold all questions to the end." Um, although our neighbors to the north have been unable to develop the technology required to create flying vessels, they have developed the ability to create domes or webs of energy which render star shards and the magic therein inert, uh, which nullifies, nullifies our air superiority and magical advantages. As such, this greatly limits our ability to launch a counter-offensive and to eliminate the forces assaulting Traffermeyer. Enemy spellcasters weave these webs by siphoning energy from dimensional anchors scattered throughout the land, places where uh, our plane and other planes come a little bit closer together and are held together uh, through arcane means. <clears throat> Your mission would be twofold. First, to convert one of these anchors located within the uh, Wettacraft Islands off of the coast of the Republic of Tassoc in order to deny the enemy utilization of this resource weakening the shielding of the, to the west of Tassoc. In so doing, your team should be able to also recharge this star shard. Uh, and he pulls out the uh, kind of clear star shard he showed you before, which you should subsequently be able to use to revive your fallen comrades. Now, conversion of this anchor will be accomplished by planting of a red star a red shard place it on the table, into the ground at the center of the anchor, and recitation of a proper enchantment. Uh, as the anchor is solidified, the energy siphoned from it shall return to its original plane, and the resulting surge of energy should charge the star shard again. The energy contained within the recharged shard will be most effective in, in the immediate proximity of the anchor. As you travel further away, the energy will be pulled back into the anchor, and the shard will be rendered inert. As such, if you're going to try to revive your fallen comrades, I recommend that you do it without leaving the area. We've done this operation, Operation Twilight Bridge, will be executed upon the central island, or the central island of the Wedfrak Islands, uh, Farwatch is what they're commonly known as. The central landmass is largely desolate, uh, scrub land ringing a freshwater lake, in the center of the lake is a small forested island, and he provides you a map 
to look at. He pulls a map out of his um, <coughs> cloak and put in all the players. Uh, I, have, I do have a question there, sir. Uh, uh, if, you, if you don't mind me asking. Typically, I ask you hold all questions till the end, but go ahead. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, you said Farwatch? That's what they're commonly referred as, referred to. The, who are they? Sorry. I must the Islands. The Islands. The Farwatch Islands. We're headed to. Gotcha. All right. Uh, and do you all see the map he just pulled out for you? Yep. Right. Yes. Uh, in the center of the lake is a small forested island. That island is where the planal anchor is. We expect a small, minimally staffed outpost at that location. In that outpost, there will be at least one spellcaster on station to siphon the energy, uh, with at least two support individuals, potentially more. The location of the anchors is considered secret, as such they are lightly guarded, but movement to and from them is highly regimented, so the guardians will attack anyone approaching outside of the scheduled um, change of guard friendly forces the mission of next higher unit uh, they will be fending off assaults along the northern borders of the nation and preparing for the counterattack. adjacent units adjacent units shield team north and east will be locating and converting other anchors shield team south is still trying to ascertain the location of the children that were taken from or escaped from new dawn before your successful mission there Service and support, rations, uniforms, equipment, arms, ammunition, and captured materiel will all be provided per request. Uh, captured materiel will be dealt with as it has before. Transportation will be on the fiery dart per the request of Captain Mo. We have done some changes to the ship that will hopefully allow it to be able to pierce the web. If not, she has prepared her crew for water landing and subsequent classical sailing to the islands. Medevac and POWs will be brought back by the Fiery Dart. Um, at the end of that mission, uh, your next instructions will come from um, my liaison to your uh, unit, um, Railer. I have provided them with further instructions. Uh, they will provide them to you upon completion of the activation or conversion of the anchor. I have requested that they do not relay more information to you at this point for compartmentalization since you will be behind enemy lines. The fewer people know the next stages, the better. What are your questions at this time? What time is the changing of the guard? Unfortunately, we don't have that information. That is unfortunate. Uh I'm sorry, did you uh, mention that we had any uh, priority retrieval orders for any of these individuals? No, this is not a capture mission. You are authorized to use whatever force you see necessary, and we don't expect or need any POWs. Gotcha. Who are we taking this from? The the point? Yeah. The anchor, this anchor is currently under the control of the Republic of Tassic. Uh, some of the mages from their mages cabal use it to harvest energy to create that protective web or dome that we discussed. And we're like, we don't lack the dome? Why Why don't we just allow them to have it? That's It will stop our airships from getting through and it nullifies the power of star shards. We need to um, pr uh, initiate a counteroffensive to stop them from continuing to send waves and waves of troops against our northern borders. Okay. 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 So, uh, is this red shard dangerous? His red yeah, shard is it. is not nah. dangerous to you. It <laughs> is something that I developed after first encountering one of these um, dimensional anchors. Uh, mm. These ones mm. were personally crafted by me, and they are inert at this point. They were dangerous mm. to create, um, but at this point, as long as you don't break them. They are fine, and they're fairly robust and hardy. Significant damage mm. will cause the mm. energy contained within to be released, and the consequences are somewhat explosive. Oh. 
that's good to know. Uh, well, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put it in my coat pocket right here if, uh, if anybody doesn't mind. Uh, but, you know, I'm, last time I did this, last time I took a magical stone from a, from a sorcerer's friend and put it in my pants, uh, carried it around. I had a rash for a week. So, uh, you know, <laughs> you keep that in mind. I'm watching you, buddy. Pardon me. And uh, I'm not your buddy, pal. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, friend. And then he sits down. <laughs> not your friend, pal. He sits, he sits down and his head <laughs> sinks below the, <laughs> the level of the table. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's so short. <clears throat> All right. Well, do y'all got any more questions? Or are we ready to go? Just to clarify, the people that were uh, going to cuss in the island chain, th those are the people that bombed here, correct? They were directly working with the organization that cre that did the bombings, yes. It was a multi-faceted attack. Yes. The, uh, the team members that, well, the people who were on this team previously along... Uh, along with Tashi, Rufus, and Petra here, um, they actually encountered an insurgent force, uh, or a, a forward advance party of these Tessakians, and eliminated them at their camp, um, and found evidence there that they were working in in uh, support of and in conjunction with the Rising Dawn, the terrorist element who provided who did the bombings. So we're going in to get revenge, is what I'm hearing. You can look no, at it as revenge. I not, look at it as the next tactical no, step no. in launching a counteroffensive against an enemy who is waylaying our borders and trying to wipe out our way of life as we know it. Uh, Railer kind of says, oh, I'm like, balls up a little piece of paper and just kind of throws it at um, our commanding officer who's giving us orders in a playful way. All right. Well, um, could we request some fill up on gear, like healing potions and you as, know, our usual stuff? As usual, you're able to utilize the requisition, uh, or you're able to requisition items from the um, quartermaster and such that are here. I would recommend that you do that uh, within the next couple of hours, as we have initiated uh, protocols to reassign everybody who was originally stationed here. We're still trying to vet out who may or may not have been involved in the Emperor's assassination. As such, many of the people who are normally stationed here are being reassigned to other institutions and people that we have already vetted are being brought in. Um, you have plenty of time. We will not be able to finish the updates to the flame, a fiery dart for another approximately 24 hours, at which point we would expect you to launch um, as quickly as possible. Okay, uh, I'm going to need some javelins. Again, you can approach the quartermaster and see what they have on hand. I don't have a I list of items. I approach the quartermaster and I say... You just leave in the middle javelins. of that and go get javelins. Totally. Anybody <laughs> else have questions while Tashi takes off? I assume this is our gear up time. <laughs> do what, do what y'all need to do to get uh, your I'm going for my javelins. <laughs> uh, Tashi, before you leave, hands you a ring. Uh, this is the ring of sending that the mission commander usually carries. Yep. Yep. Also, do we all have our bracelets on? Can we communicate with each other pretty easily? I don't think I have one of those. Really, really. Serge oh, just I looks have... around and he's like, bracelets? Three of um, them were lost. Mo. How many do we have right uh, now? Mo, Rupus, and Petra all raised their hands. What about Jaina's? That's Jaina's with Mo. Was. It's with Mo. Okay. Um. Oh, that's right. We did that. Did Daisy have? Is one? there? Yes, Daisy has one also, but it's very tiny. It won't fit any of you. What about? Um, a no. It goes on her pinky. <laughs> <laughs> um. So can we like? Uh, is there any way we can get more of these? I, I'm not sure what that is. I just know that you're all wearing them and that. The princess had one. 
Jada right. gave it to us. I'm sure it's a we way can provide yarn and beads. Communicate? What? Can I? Their may communication I? device. Yes, please. He holds out a hand over it, and you feel a, a tingling sensation. Where, where do you have the bracelet? It's on your wrist? Me? On my wrist, yeah. yeah you feel mm -hmm. a tingling sensation travel uh, up your arm into your shoulder. It's not at all unpleasant, but it is a little disconcerting. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, he, he removes his hand. He's like, this, this feels like her magic. She made these. What what do you say they do? They communicate. The bracelets. They they like, talk to each other or they allow you to talk to one another? They allow us to talk <clears throat> to one another. Could I could I borrow this? I would be very interested in trying to reverse engineer and see if I could make a couple more for you before you leave. Yes. If you think you can do it before we leave, yes. If not, then I need mine back, and then you can borrow it again when we're done. I will ensure that yours is brought back to you before the mission starts. Railer hands Gordicar the three that they made together, the little team that was fucking around with crafts before. <laughs> yeah, does a uh, does he does he look any strange to uh, to Danzen? Like looking at his face, like does his intentions seem 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 decent? Oh, I get what you're getting at. Sorry, my brain was like, what are you asking me? Um, go ahead and roll an insight check. How is that? Oh, I guess. I mean, you can tell that he looked really surprised um, mm -hmm. to find these things existed, and his comment about it being Jaina's magic was, uh, he seemed almost proud. Um, and then he seems very insight or very earnest. He's very interested in reverse engineering this and seeing how it ticks. I just imagine a world where we all have one and we just reach each other at any point in time. Heck, we could even get to the point where it doesn't even need to be in real time. We can just send each other a message for later reading or later listening to, you know what I mean? Like, th this would open up the whole world, make it flat again. Very interesting. Really shakes his head. Says, no, I had that earlier. <laughs> it was horrible. I, I, you know, I would I agree. I once, me. I once created a, a pair of scrolls that uh, one could send a text message, as it were, to one another, but no one ever responded. So we scrapped that uh, that plan. Can't imagine why that didn't work for you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, well, uh, I'm going to go get to work on this. Uh, I have a few other um, commitments this evening. You know, planning a defense of an empire. And, you got a hot date? Oh, well, you know, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, defending an empire, making sure people have food, helping keep security. But, you know, uh, when I have time, I'll go ahead and look at this. Any other questions? Uh, you said that uh, Shield Team North and East were both going to convert anchors. Correct. Uh, different locations? Correct. Okay. I have personally in my exploration of the world before I um, joined the Magus Cabal back here in the Saffron Empire, I have found the location mm -hmm. of seven of these scattered throughout uh, the nearby lands. So using that data, they are trying to convert as many as possible to deny the enemy the opportunity to utilize um, the energies they're in. Very interesting. Uh, now, these high-priority items, I don't imagine uh, they're going to go unnoticed when they get turned off. No. Uh, how, uh, how soon after our initial mission would you expect that we'd have to... Uh, uh, turn around, head back out into the field. We might want to hit these things sequentially. We've considered that more information will be provided to you as soon as you are able to successfully convert the point you have been assigned. Ah, true. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. Gotcha. Fair, fair question. Uh, what else? Just is there... to check, this little bobcat's a, a rabbit, right? I'm sorry, what? 
Yes, the bobcat is a rabbit. That is the chain mill. It looked very decked out. I mean, that is a blink dog, by the way, not a bobcat. Okay, get your monster manual out and learn some stuff. God. (laughs) But yes, it does look a little (laughs) bobcatty. The puma. Yeah. Well, if there are no further questions. Is there anything that I. Oh, is there anything else I should ask that I haven't? Oh, yeah, good interview question. Uh, I mean, not that I can think of. I'm actually going to provide you a copy of the op order. They half-assed op order. I left a lot of it blank because I didn't care. Um, Is there anything in our qualifications or experience that makes you unhappy with us fulfilling this role or maybe... Um, any questions that leave you wondering if we will be successful in this endeavor? Well, first, I'm not we hiring you, so these questions seem highly targeted. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> secondly, um, no, I, I the reason I brought the three of you on to this team, at least for the short term, is for the completion of this mission, because I know that each of you brings uh, skills that will help round out this team. And it's like, it's, like what? it's wanting like me what to share else? the entire workbook and not just the page. So I'm just going to post the um, a portion of the pertinent information here in the Zoom yes, chat for you guys. Um, I will let you guys I will let you guys discuss amongst yourselves um, what skills and abilities you think you bring. Ooh, I would love to start this round table. Go for it. If there are no further questions, I'm going to leave. Oh, we'd actually like you to stand there quietly while we have this entire conversation. You're funny. You think you could do that? (laughs) Have fun with the bracelets. I mean, running the empire. Mm, Indeed. And he walks out. (laughs) Yes, me, yes, me. Come here, Um, punk. What's your name? What's your name again? Oh. Oh. It's Aria. That's her name. No. Hello, everybody. How you feeling? Hi, Aria. Oh, my little heart. Hello, everyone. It's so Yeah. Best. What happened? Okay. Tell good night. It's cold. Good night. Good night. I want to call you. All right, sorry. Carry on with your story, y'all. I can never hear her that clearly. This I is know. so clear tonight. Not to be nice and loud tonight. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, go for it. What's your name again? Ah, shit. This is supposed. To... Um, uh, my name is Raylor Hunt. Raylor. And uh, I'd love to know what you bring to the team. Great. Oh. Uh. These nuts. <laughs> Got them. <laughs> Yo. Um. Uh, you know, I just bring love and kindness to the world, and I'm so excited to be working with you all. I know you've lost a lot, but um, love is like a melody, one that I will always treasure. And courage is the key that opens every door. So, so you may not know where your aims may lead, and you may be not oh sure where God. you should start. Are you just gonna talk in idiom the entire time? Know you? <laughs> Do you have any <laughs> unique destiny? Thanks for strumming, and you written in my heart. Oh my God. Uh, all right. Well, that was um something. Um, how about you, Dan- Danzen? Uh, yeah. Um, as you can see, I've got a unique perspective on life. Um, uh, actually, I think uh, you and I might share some things in common. Uh, I think you and me. I think, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I do have a knack for uh, for for finding things. I'm often. Uh... Hello. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Does finding uh, things I'm normally gonna... go like better for you than it did just a few minutes ago? Or well, is that the type you know... of like good at finding things that we're gonna be expecting in the future? <laughs> I like you. You're uh you're you're very uh you know, very astute, uh, right up my alley. Um <laughs> unlike Stony, he's not up any alley, uh which is outside my purview. Um uh-huh. But uh, yeah, no, I'm good at finding things, uh, whether they're uh, hidden in somebody's dresser or in their mind. So, uh, I mean, not like literally just get them to talk, you know what I mean? Like, it's nothing, not, no knives, nothing. Uh... <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'll, uh, and, and, and I, I suppose, I suppose sometimes people tend not to notice me. Uh, I'm working on it. I'm really trying to have presence. Uh, I've been working with my therapist on this. Uh, he told me to manifest. I really try to manifest your, greater your presence. What? Uh, working uh, with your what? My, my, my uh, my, uh, yeah. Well, that's dangerous. Um, my... You should take caution, maybe. Did you say uh, the <laughs> rapist? <laughs> wow. <Well. laughs> Jesus You're Christ. working with the rapist? <laughs> I'm sorry, that, who's taking titles because working with the rapist needs to be one of them? Ooh, oh my god. Got it. Why would you? <laughs> no. Why you don't... That's what you said. You said I'm working with the rapist. <laughs> I would be scary if I had no eyebrows. Hmm. You just look yeah. normal. I don't. <laughs> No, no, Mm-mm. no, you wouldn't. Sorry, carry on. I was like, what are you doing with your finger? That's the middle finger. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I suppose that's uh, that's me. Um... Okay, all right. And uh, ha- how about you? Um, uh, what's your name again? Serge. Uh, Serge. Like Sergio. Surge, uh, yeah, tell, us, tell us what you feel like you bring to this team. I can be many places at once and can infiltrate places easily. And I'm pretty stocky myself, I uh, can take a hit and dish out even more. So Guess you can just call me an all-around powerhouse. Powerhouse. Okay. All right. Well, I get angry, and I get stuff. Um, what? Petra here's got a pension for historical facts and art-related things, and is also just very good at the details, the fine details. Petra says, Don "I know Rufus. stuff and do magic." There, there you go. There you go. Slay. And uh. Rupus here. I'm good with wood. Things from wood. Yep. There there it is. Uh he with wood. Uh and and bargaining and merchant type activities. Um I'm also no slouch with a bow. Stony who and is also no slouch with a bow. And Stony, who's not here right now, he's the one that Danzen was trying to find. Uh is very good at taking uh, valuable prisoners or valuable people to us who have information and extracting that information from them. Ooh, with knives? <laughs> oh, no, he doesn't He doesn't ever have to use a weapon, honey. Oh. That's right. You'll see. He's a magic user. Okay. No, he doesn't use magic either. You'll see. You'll see. Stone. Al natural. Nope. Nope. Definitely none of those things. Stony is none of those things. He's not strong. He's not good with magic. <laughs> He's not good with weapons. Really is now frightened Except of Stony. Stone. Um, Petra yeah. says, you know, you could say that Stony rocks. Oh, God. <laughs> I could. Um, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, how would y'all feel about uh going and getting your inventory wait that you need for the evening but, and oh. am i allowed to do an insight check to see how uh how tashi reacted to that like how she felt <laughs> after hearing to what? say exactly. that the rocks? yeah <laughs> that he rocks you won't you won't need an insight check you'll literally see me go 
<laughs> I could say that, but I'm not going to. Uh, you won't need an inside check. I just love the know. imagery of the short lizard. <laughs> What's happening on my like face? Lizard, yes, gorgeous. the tiny lizard going. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do we feel about working on our inventory? Whatever you need, you can go get from the quartermaster. And then the rest of the evening is free. We can either meet back here where our bunks are and chat or have dinner. We can go our separate ways. What do y'all think? Green beans? I love green beans. Fabulous. What about green beans? With a dinner. How is that relevant? Oh, dinner. Yeah, I will definitely have green beans for dinner. I can make them like eight different ways yeah. well, just oh, in this ooh. room. I'll buy you cook. Perfect. Dancing. Serge. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think it would be real nice to uh, get to know you fellas. You seem uh, you seem like my type of people. Oh, I am a girl. I don't know. Yeah. That. Just throwing that out there. I know oh, it's okay. hard to tell sometimes. But yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm sure Petra well. would have made some comment about being a queen, but that's okay. <laughs> ah. Insert snappy um, queen comment here. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm going to go to the quartermaster. And okay. ask for my javelins, ask for some potions of healing. Of course, as you walk in, you see Horse Rung um, standing behind the yeah. counter. Mm -hmm. uh, he's like, oh, you're, you're back. Um, is, is Petra back with you guys? She is. Oh, well, I was hoping to She'll see her probably... before they shipped me off. You might see her. We're um, getting ready to ship you off. Where are you going and when? Uh... <laughs> They are moving everybody who was on this floor, possibly everybody who was in the tower during the Emperor's assassination. I don't know if they don't trust people or what, but I'm being sent to Trotalport. Oh. Did you do it? Did I do what? Get sent to Trotalport? Did you... No, did you assassinate? No. Of course not. Oh, okay. I was... I, you know, I'm not judging here. I was just asking you know I and mean, that's the process you're being asked right i mean you know, at least you're I... very passionate even if you did do it you would get away with it with that kind of response because you seem very passionate i heard that your old commander was in on it murder hathema oh did you, you did murder hathema no murder okay <laughs> murder hathema is it is it true was was hathema in on it he seemed like such a good guy did Tashi know? Oh, wait. Do I know that? Yeah, I, mean, I was in the room, right? Yeah, that was part of the whole reason you guys were sent to potentially bring him back or to kill him. Well, but they didn't have, like, a whole, uh, like, they weren't relaying everything when they were in the room, getting the feline out. When, when Gordikar was in the magic circles with you guys, the Zones of Truth, the whole party that was present, which is everyone that, w except for the non, the new people, they all uh, were told okay. that he was okay. part of it. Well, I was thinking like we could see him with the shards through the mind's eye, but never mind. It was surprising to us too. Hmm. Well, enough about sad stories. What can I get for you? Javelins and potions. Mm, I have, have a lot of javelins and a few potions. What kind of? How many javelins do you need? I need two. I threw two, and I, I never got that because they were uh, vaporized. Hmm. Well, they're typically five silver a piece, but uh, I heard that you guys did some good work out there, so these two are on me. Great, thank you. Of course. I will. will definitely pass on your generosity to the entire team including Petra and also potions would be great what kind of potions do you need healing mm, I think that's 50 normally yeah, yeah. Uh, they're usually 50 but I got a recent shipment and it's not all in the books so I could probably give them to you for 25 a piece I have 4 25 gold a piece mm -hmm. for four standard potions healing I'll do that 
Yeah. Sounds great. Okay. If anybody asks, so uh, you didn't get those ones from me. Not for that price. You get what? Get what from who? Precisely. I don't know what you're talking about. Is there anything else you're looking for? No, that's it. Thank you so much. All right. Well, I wish you all luck on whatever happens next. And if you're ever in Trottleport, stop by. Sorry, I was only speaking for myself. I thought we were in like a line kind of thing. So I didn't want to make anyone feel like they couldn't also get what they need. Oh, he's he's welcome to let he's that saying that to you. Everybody okay, else okay. is welcome Bye. to shop as well. Next. Uh, I was told that uh if I brought my uh, dagger here in this requisition form, uh, I could have this exchange for a, a, a magical one that was available. Um special special order for Shield Team West. Hmm, let me look at it. Is this one of the magical items you selected? Uh, yeah, just like a plus one. Yeah. Or, oh. Yeah. Okay, yep. I do have it here. <clears throat> what else can I do for you? What does it look like? Uh, it look like? So, um, this one is a little different than the standard daggers you guys have been carrying. Um, it looks a little abashed. It's like, it's the best one we could find on short notice. The blade is, uh, it's this interesting, um, almost copper color but very patinaed all the way across the blade uh the actual mm -hmm. cross bracer on the hilt is nothing very long but it's not even one side is about a third longer than the other um and it's also got that same coppery and patinaed color um but the longer end uh ends in what looks like a almost a dragon's tail it has a little flail a, a little flare and comes to a point and the other end um, ends with a kind of notch coming into it, like a dovetail, almost. The handle itself is wrapped in wire um, that has been dimpled for it to be a good grip. And it is one um, completely black wire with one of the patinaed uh, wires going down, coming to a pommel um, that is just solid uh, brass or copper. <clears throat> the blade is approximately... Uh, but that that's six inches, right? Yes. Uh, approximately, yes. approximately, real Jeez, life six, six inches. inches. Oh. And although it looks a little worn, it looks like it is extremely sharp oh. and very durable. Ah, perfect, perfect, perfect. Nobody's gonna <laughs> suspect a thing. And then he uh. <laughs> So he'll attach it to his uh his hip and then step off to the side after you, and uh, looks behind him to, um. Serge. Serge. Serge, you do any shopping? Oh, I I I got what I need. I came prepared. Perfect. Uh, so I guess you look behind you and you see Railer. Do you need anything? Um, really kind of waves on and just says that. Um, they've, uh, it's good to see you again. I'm just tagging along with everyone here. Railer? Kind of Railer, is that you? Strong. It is. My goodness, Never it's been a while. I'll be here. I, it has. <laughs> uh, you and your, your witticisms. I thought you were on Gordikar's detail. I am. I am here now with these guys. Isn't this fun? It's a thing. Do you remember that that one time at Selhinki? <laughs> oh, oh Selhinki. Man, we got in some wild nights there. Oof. Well, it was a good time. It's good to see you again. I Take... was so young then. So much is happened. Weren't we all uh, before my bum <laughs> knee? Oof, that arrow. <sighs> well. Uh, do me a favor. I will you take yeah. care of them. Yeah. These these folks have done some really good stuff and. A couple of them are really special to me. I'm gonna say they're a lot more experienced than me. They they seem really well equipped. Which which one's your posse? Which one's is it the blue one? Kind of points to talk. I'm a... There's two blue. <laughs> Remember, I'm... there's me and Ruby. Blue green. <laughs> the light blue one. Like, I, yeah. I, I I like the whole team. They're they're great, but um, I kind of am into the purple horny one, Petra. The horny, the horny one under. Horny. Oh, I get what yeah, I get. Yeah, one it more is. Fun yeah, purple people eater. Like, ah, how could I miss? Yeah, yeah, no. That uh, that makes sense. That's very your type. 
Well, fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's really I'll good to see you again, Railer. Um, yeah. Let me, if you're ever in Triangle, or if you're ever in Turtle Port, Turtle Port, let me know. Uh, I'll have to catch up and reminisce. Absolutely. What What do you want me to bring by from our next trip? It sounds like we're going to some island chains. Surprise me. Probably shouldn't say more. I know you sometimes have those loose lips, and I don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> uh, you remember yeah. lips? Oh, that guy. Anyway. Lips. All right. Well, Floppy yeah, I'll just tag lips. along to these ones. Can I come along? It's fine. We're, I'm just going to follow them anyway. Okay. And uh, when we see them next, I'll give... Um, Rupus and uh, Stony. Well, Rupus, an opportunity to shop. Uh, but as you all leave, Petra walks in and um, gently closes uh -oh. the door behind her. Um, <laughs> and we'll leave it there. <clears throat> so, because we still don't know what Petra is deciding fade to do. Fade to black. Well, fade to who knows what, because <laughs> Petra still is not informing me on what her decision on the future of her relationship with uh, uh, Rob. Yes, the quartermaster. How did I just forget his name? I said it just a minute ago. For those of you watching, I was up most of the night with a sick toddler, so my brain is even more crazy than normal. Plus, I did not take any of my ADHD medications today because, you know, I woke up from my nap late. So, this is what you Horse get. Horse wrong. <laughs> Horse wrong, thank you. need a minute to go take your meds, bro? Well, it's way too late. If I take them now, I'm not going to sleep. Oh. oh. Caffeine? So. I just finished a Coke, so we'll see what happens. Oh, you drink Coke? Bad for With the cane. <laughs> drink Coke and uh, honestly, Rockstar. I've been keeping like Rockstar in business since I had a kid. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. At least it's not Rippets. And... So actually, <laughs> um, oh, I got a Rippet the other day. They have them at like the dollar store. What? Stores. Yeah, if you go to a dollar what? store like Dollar Tree, they have rippets, but it's not the half cans. They're like normal size cans, and they oh, taste God. just as awful as I remembered. And then nostalgia yep. was strong, and like my wife took a sip and she like literally gagged. So it was the most disgusting thing. Yeah, and I was like, it's, it's bad, but it tastes awful. like freedom. Yeah, right. It's the <laughs> it's the Stockholm syndrome, like right? truly. It's because I used to t like I would take a taste and I'd be like, yeah, this tastes like what I think piss tastes like. I'm not positive because I've never actually tasted piss. Thank God. I have. It's similar. No, but... I'm kidding. <laughs> no, we'd get them from our uh, our supply sergeant because we're medics and you know we always hook each other up, and so we'd hook them up mm -hmm. with you know like Tordal shots, and he'd give us like racks of um, rippets. So you slam like six of those before before a mission. Drink. I liked the one that tasted kind of like pine salt smells. Yeah. Um, that I one was that really one. good. That one was really good. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. Brought freedom and <laughs> lots of caffeine to Afghanistan. <laughs> oh, Eid Mubarak to any of our visitors or any of our um, observers. Uh, yeah. Goes out to you. Technically, it was yesterday, but in some places, they celebrate Eid for up to three days. It so. started yesterday. Yeah. yeah. What is it? Eid? For the uninitiated? Oh, Eid, uh, Eid al-Fatar is... Yeah, Eid al Fatar is the uh, celebration of the breaking of the fast. It's the day after Ramadan ends, and it's a big, big party. So, it's what you oh, think okay. Thanksgiving should be. Mm -hmm. oh, it's actually, okay. so I, I actually wrote an article about it for Providence. Um, I collaborated with a couple oh, yeah. of our Muslim caregivers, and one of them said it's not, he basically described it as uh, Islamic Thanksgiving. Like, he said, "It's yeah, it's no. just picture Thanksgiving with better food, like better. <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, and also the difference is also you've been fasting in ways yeah. that you no yeah. longer have yeah. to. Don't do that for so when that day comes, you're like, oh, no. no, do you? <laughs> yeah, was... people let us eat the night before. We don't have dinner in the morning of. We don't have breakfast. We don't have lunch. It's miserable. I'm like, we, you're not religious enough for this. Get out of here. Let me eat." <laughs> It was super lit in South Seattle on Friday when I took Willow to her appointment. There was just obvious Muslim folks, very nicely dressed, like everybody going to places, grabbing stuff. And like you could tell because usually it's usually like Vietnamese and Muslim community. But it was just like everybody out 
in Othello area was just all the Muslim people and they were just everyone looks super happy. I mean I'd be happy too if I got to eat after fasting, right. but yeah. That's Honestly, it was pretty like, cool. I loved Eid because like it was always quiet for us. And the day after Eid yeah. always sucked. But Eid itself was good. <laughs> I remember the day after Eid in Afghanistan. There was a lot of casualties. I kinda day. wish I didn't remember the day after Eid. Honestly, like Ramadan, so my first deployment, Ramadan, was in the middle of the fighting season. Um, yep. Which was great because then, like, our the attacks on our FOB cut down to, like, a third of what they normally were. And then, like, the day after Eid, I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot what this was like. Cool. Let's <laughs> let's go back to war. So. All of our A&A like shaved their heads and stared at us like they were going to try and kill us during Ramadan. Right. See, uh, I know we had this weird thing like we didn't F with them on E they didn't F with us on Easter so it was cool like, <laughs> like yeah it's like a ceasefire we had years. this we had this like big like like multi culture or multi religious um, Easter service out in the middle of our fob no cover anything like that on Salerno Rocket City where we get hit at least once a day if not two or three times a day by rockets right and um, they're like, uh, who wants to be medic? I'm like, well, I guess I'm on that detail, right? Because I'm available. Uh, I wasn't going on patrol that day. And I'm like, we're going to get fucked up. No, that was quiet. It was a beautiful day. Perfect temperature. It was sunny, but not like too hot. It was great. Um, so, yeah. So we didn't fuck with the money. Next day, so. <laughs> next, anyway. next day, it was seven rockets. Yeah. But yeah. I think it was the only week after that that we got hit by the... Well, anyway. Um, yeah, good times. Um, <laughs> all right. I don't uh... remember where we were. <laughs> What's that? I don't remember where we were at in the game at this point. Yeah, well, we got really off topic there. Sorry about that. ADHD brain. The... <laughs> we had just left the uh, the closing of the doors. Right. The spot, no. And the doors and walls are nice and thick, so you don't hear the conversation or whatever else is going on in there. So, okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, so at this point, you guys are free to go about, and you probably get your meals and whatever. Is there anything else anybody else was planning on doing or needing to do? I'm gonna propose to Think live, live Tyler while listen to do a song by my dad. I'm just kidding. No, I'm fine. Okay. Just take it easy. <laughs> Take it in the easy, bunk area with easy, some pee take it easy, meals. Don't me say and uh, <laughs> me and I'll get your names eventually. Me and Railer will uh make some pee meals. We couldn't name that long green or anything. We had to name it green pee meals. green bean green bean Thank meals. You. Pee rats. Yeah. <laughs> All right. When the hell am I going to get jalapeno? Uh, anybody else have anything they need to do? Otherwise, you guys are welcome to hit the racks. Because... Can someone check in on the little bird and see if she's doing well? I'm sorry, the medic? No. So, um, as you guys are wandering around, you notice that all the other permanent staff have <laughs> already... are already gone. Um, there is the only... Um, Non guard on the floor right now is ho is horse rung. Um, the others have all been s ostensibly shipped off to other places. <clears throat> okay. She's actually doing really well. She's at the medic training right. facility, and she she's uh, indoctrinating the next uh, core group of medics um, in how to be both. Uh, phenomenal medics and a little bit slutty. <laughs> Fabulous! Good for her. Okay. So, but, you know, you don't actually know that. Yeah. Okay. Well, like, Emil does in the afterlife. Oh, of course. So, alright. Um, As you guys all head back to your racks that night, uh, feeling a little more uh, familiar with one another and Belly's a little more full. Um, you lay down and uh, fall into an uneasy sleep as you prepare for this unknown mission into enemy territory. When you wake the next morning, um, you notice Stony is back, sitting at the table, 
uh, kind of the just covered in dirt, cuts, scrapes, scratches. Um, his shoes are just filthy, uh, hair all messed up. Um, his wool hat that he normally wears is kind of off kilter. Uh, he's just sitting there with a rock in his hands, just kind of turning it over and looking at it. Um, this really far off look in his eyes. Um, seems completely oblivious to you guys waking up. What's wrong, Stony? Are you sick? Is there something in your throat? Who, uh, your, your friend who over there you? looks like he's been in a landslide. Hey, Stony. Is he? Y'all, y'all right? Hi, Tosh. No, what, I'm not all right. What's going on? I don't. I don't want to do this anymore. Okay. They're dead. Yeah. Oh, they're dead, and for what? What did we even oh, do? Stella. It was my plan too. I mean, that could have happened to any of us. So but exactly. it didn't happen to any of us. It happened to them. I, I don't want to do this anymore. Then don't. <laughs> you think, oh I, think I would have left? You think I wouldn't have left by now if I could? Is it, is it cursed? It's the, he glances really quickly at the unknown people in the room that he's not familiar with. It, it's the thing we talked about. Nah, I can see it when you're feeling low. You can't hide that from me. You're no status quo calico, so why do you keep trying to be? You're more than that. It's, it's like, you know the scene in <clears throat> Finding Nemo where the baby turtle is talking to him and he's like, I know he's talking to me, I just can't understand anything he's saying. It's like Sometimes he's trying to like communicate. You, Emmy. <laughs> yeah. You just said that whole thing and I'm like, was that English? I have no idea. <laughs> Tony looks, uh, Looks over at Railer, but confused. Uh, I don't even know what Tony would say there. He says something weird. Um, he looks back at Tasha, like, "What? What's next for us?" I guess. Well, we've got another mission, but you know, I would love to have you with us because we're not as good a team without you. But are you asking me? You know. It looks you no. square in the eyes. Are you asking me? Um, no. I'm leaving it up to you. Well, what's the mission? We're, uh, retrieving a part of a shard that, uh, the other town... <laughs> never gonna remember all the names. I'm sorry, Brandon. You don't have uh, to. <laughs> using to create a protective dome over them, and that dome basically means that we have, like, no air space there our aircraft can't fly there and it basically negates our air superiority when it comes to these and these are the people that are launching you know missions at us over or I guess at the Empire over and over and over again hmm. so there needs to be something that stops it the good news is if you do choose to come with us I don't think that there's intention to murder this this mission hmm. it's and, uh, much less if I, if I was sure and correct last... uh, during the briefing I think they mentioned something about a uh, some kind of spell that would be charged with the magic crystal right here and he like pulls out the little red one um, like after we use this and then I don't know which one of you guys like took the clear crystal um, or which one of our it's still sitting on the table. It's actually what Stoney is twirling in his hands right now. Okay. Um, do you do you know what that does? It looks like a looks like a rock. I like rocks. <laughs> Don't throw that one. I, I, you know, I, I like rocks too. I like that one. Uh, supposedly, uh, that one right there that you have in your hands. If we complete this mission. It will charge this up and give you a chance at, I guess, resurrecting someone? Uh, I suppose 
it's clear enough, you know, from my perspective, uh, there was a reason why I was brought on this team. Stony looks at Petra. We, we can bring them back. Petra gets this kind of faint smile, a little, a little tear in her eye. Sounds like maybe. We've got enough for three in that one piece that we're going after. Or the one piece that we have. I'm in. Three charges. I'm in. Cool. Maybe we can undo some damage that was already done. And about that time, uh, the door gently opens and you see Gordakar walk in. Um with a little satchel. It's like, uh, Stony, you've, you've returned. So I says, yep, if I didn't come back, it would have been AWOL. Gordokar, okay, well, I'm glad you're back. Um, will you be joining the rest of the team for this mission? Stony nods. Good, then I have, I have some things for you. Um, Tashi, I was able to recreate those bracelets, but <gasps> they're not exactly the same. He pulls them out, and they look like they were made by a first grader. Like, oh god, the, he's definitely not <laughs> an artsy. Like he's not an artsy and craftsy kind of guy, right? <laughs> like, they're very rough rope, and you know they have like mm -hmm. feathers and beads on them and stuff. But it's very clearly not the same level of love and handiwork that Jaina put into him. <laughs> this, um, I believe these will sync with the other ones. Uh, there should be enough for the entire team. <coughs> Gordakar, what did you do with mine that I gave you? Raylor's just very, very distraught that his are gone. The first few attempts were not very successful. This was very, <laughs> this was very intricate and um, impressive spell work that I didn't know she was capable of. I mean, she only had bardic training. This was definitely sorcerer or above level magic. Hmm. So. Could she have gotten help from somebody for days? She must have. Someone must have taught her a weave, or she must have read a text or something. But it was definitely her power, but it was a very interesting way it was done. Regardless, I was able to recreate them, um, but the first few attempts were disastrous. I'm not ashamed to admit. As long as they work, you know. Mm -hmm. They should That's work. That's the most important um, piece. Thank goodness only the first attempts were disastrous. I haven't been able to test the range, but I'm assuming it should be on par with what you had before. Um, Serge right. puts his on, and if it does work, you just hear what makes the green grass grow. Which... <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, it. Everyone wearing bracelets hears that. Um, Blood? That's right! <laughs> Uh, he also takes out a, um, a parchment and hands it to Tashi. Tashi, this is the translation of um, the enchantment that needs to be spoken over the planted red shard to convert the crystal. Okay. okay. Now, for he uh, takes out two cylinders um, that look like they open on the end. They're almost like um, scroll tubes. Uh, he pulls them out and he says, these are, uh, he opens one, these are padded to protect those gems that you were given. A small one for the red one, a slightly larger one for the clear one. <clears throat> um, when, if that star shard charges, the activation is fairly simple. Someone who knew the individual you're trying to call forth back into life needs to hold it, to think of the person, and to speak their name. If they are, if their soul is free and willing, They'll return. If not, well, they won't. I wish you the best of luck on that. And he turns finally over to um, Railer uh, and hands Railer a satchel. These are the things that we discuss for the next leg of the journey. Um, to, yeah, bet good hunting. And would this be a good time to take a uh, five or ten minute break? Sure would. As Gordakar walks out of the room. 
<laughs> Adam's like, I, I need more drinks. <laughs> Sorry, small man, small bladder. <laughs> and with that, we're going to go ahead and take a short break. We'll be back in approximately five to ten minutes. So somewhere honestly between seven and 14, because that's just how we roll. So we'll see I'm you. I'm going to cut my hair real quick. All right, we'll see you in a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back with more Defenders of the Fallen Star here with Beth Blade D and D.
Hello and welcome back to Vets Play D and D with us, the vets who are playing D and D, um, with this extremely exciting episode that we're having, uh, where our party had just woken up and uh, gotten the last minute information that they needed and last pieces of the puzzles. I choked on a cough drop. Ugh, pardon me. That probably sounded great. We're just having a great stream tonight. Um, and uh, yeah, as Gordakar leaves the room, uh, all eyes fall on Tashi. Okay. Uh, we're going to run this real loosey goosey lack. Basically, if you feel like doing it, just do it. Uh, we're not going to have people go in in like a certain order or wait for orders from me unless two people are conflicting. We'll settle any of that at my level, but otherwise, y'all are autonomous. Oh, okay. just hear like a real weird in your head. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! Is someone choking on phallic items? <laughs> oh, for Jesus Christ. All right. Y'all ready? There's no Jesus here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Surge is ready. As you guys head on out um, toward the uh, the docking bay, you notice that the number of guards on the floor has dropped. Um, the rooms before, which had um, different medics and um, trainers, shopkeeps, as it were, they're all empty. It seems like there are very few people on this floor anymore. Um, <clears throat> The general vibe in the tower itself has been um, down. Very few people. Everyone's just getting shipped and pushed to different places. Um, that really brings home the fact that this is an empire uh -huh. war, and every blade is needed at the front. Do it, friends. Or, in your case, beyond the front. What? As you approach the fiery dart docked in its berth, um, you see Captain Mo shouting orders, um, Hey new sense of urgency and fire uh, in her as she looks at you and says, away in God all day, y'all. Get on up here. We gotta go. Okie doke. Man, you see Surge just kind of you know, prop in. She Actually, you know what? What you up. see is Surge just kind of stands still and then you see like a shadow uh, almost like an apparition appear on the ship, and at that same moment, Surge disappears <clears throat> and changes places with it. Alright. Mm. Mo looks at you. Well, that's, that's fancy trick. there. Show off. <laughs> as soon as it shows up to the loading dock with, uh, like, his like, whole travel pack and everything like that, he's got, like, the coils of his hemp rope wrapped around his torso, and it just looks like a giant, like, puff jacket on him. Um, and he's, like, <laughs> the, the, his backpack and the crowbar and everything is, like, towering over him as he's, like, <laughs> huffing and puffing to like, get it back onto the ship. And he's, like, one foot at a time, but, like, he's only with, like, six inches with every step. <laughs> so he looks like he's, like, uh, he looks like he's summiting Everest right now. Um I'm like, yeah, you think broad enough, hon? You got a you got a beauty bag in there? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. We're, we're gonna we're, we're gonna have a great time. Yep. Uh this is definitely this is definitely what I want to do right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can tell you're about to pass out. Why don't you hurry on up and get in there? <laughs> uh, no, I'm I'm fine. I'm doing good. I'm good. I'm doing great. A couple, yeah, of, the, yeah. a couple of the deck hands reach down and very aggressively assist you up the gangplank. <laughs> <laughs> when, they, when, they, when they lift up him and his pack, like it's still surprising to them how light it is. <laughs> <laughs> and as they pick him up, like drops of sweat, like are like falling off of his face, like onto the ground. So they're like <laughs> there's like a trail of sweat as they're like <laughs> carrying him forward. Share the load. Share the load. <laughs> uh, as the last um, team member's feet leave the gangplank and land on the deck, 
uh, Mo flips the lever and the ship rises and starts to bank. No one even has time to pull up the gangplank. It just falls to the floor um, in the uh, bay and she just punches it. Usually she takes a nice leisurely pace coming out of the tower, sailing over the town, and then once she leaves the airspace of uh, Skyfont, then she punches it. But no, as soon as she's got a bearing, just <laughs> start zipping along uh, at top speed. Uh, the ground is going by below you guys at a blur. Um, as the sun is <clears throat> beginning to come up, uh, to your guys is to the uh, east. Says, All right, y'all. Now we'll be going in. Uh, we're going in at top speed. As we get closer, I am going to have to slow down. We expect to be there around nightfall. Uh, oh, we expect to get get close mid afternoon, and we should be hitting that that barrier around uh, dusk. All right. If all goes well, we'll be able to fly right in using the. We'll turn on the stealth, and no one will see us. We'll be able to land right quick and get you where you need to be, and hopefully bring back... Well, anyway, uh, if all don't go well, and we hit that, that uh, barrier, we're going to be sailing in old-school style. Uh, we might need some uh, some hands. Anybody here not know how to swim? Oh, good. All right. Well... <laughs> then that's not too much of a problem. Y'all got a few, you know, we got a little while, so if you need to take any preparations or take a nap or whatnot, now's your chance. I do feel like at the answer to that question, Rupus would have been like, oh boy. <laughs> right? Because the water, he always needs hydrated, so it would be nothing but a yeah. win. Well, I, guess I feel like Rupus would water. just be hanging off the edge of the ship, just like the hand in the, in the water. <laughs> so it's um, just going to or fate. Surge is just gonna kind of sit down and meditate. <laughs> oh. Meditate. Oh, he's just doing that right right there. Okay. All right. Mm -mm. Uh, Brailler asks if anyone wants to do a quick dance to really just engage the systems. Engage the systems. <laughs> uh, what kind of dance? He starts singing. <laughs> Do a plie and never fail. Don't ever stray from protocol. And starts like doing a twelve step around everything. Mm -hmm. no. A ballroom <laughs> style. Watch <laughs> no, that dog won't hunt. I'm watching you from here. <laughs> <laughs> Though Daisy does join you and kind of like just hops after you, not actually doing any kind of dance, just following you around. He kind of gets quieter and like leans down and like whispers it almost. <laughs> Shoulders back and tummy and starts like picking up the paws. Pick you up and lift the chin in. <laughs> What's stanza doing though? That's the third stanza. Sorry. <laughs> Julian's part if that's helpful. Who? Um, All right. Should we consider uh, Petra? I know in the past when we've been approaching a new environment or stealth is a concern mm -hmm. uh, upon land and we've had a plan of sorts that mm -hmm. we've used and that's been that thing you do with the without a tray something like that I don't know I feel like someone said those words at some point anyway I do remember that it gave us a little bit easier passage would that be a possibility to do again for this mission? Um, what kind of her spell is? Because I think you're thinking about Rupus. Past she does have that, right? Yeah, it, it would oh. definitely be Rupus. Okay, well yeah, then, be Rupus. <clears throat> then just pretend I said all of that to Rupus. <laughs> sure. Oh, grip it. Just like going down the road. I'm like, I'm looking at Petra's stuff. I'm like, ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Rupus says, oh, yeah, mm, I can make a sneaky. Hmm. That sounded like a weird, like, <laughs> Kermit Yoda thing. Mm, yes. Maybe well, Yoda's doing some shit over there or something. <laughs> well, Yoda. You got it, boss. Just let me know when you want to be Tiggy sneaky. Are the same voice. Sounds great. Okie dokie. All right. Other, other than that, anything else anyone's concerned about before we get in there um 
just to clarify, a mule, not a mule. Mule's dead. <laughs> Mule's dead as hell. Just like fate. God damn, you guys. <laughs> Fuck. I was like, why is it Dead's this dead, way? baby. Like my thought. Yeah, because Mule's dead. dead. I'm not looking at a Mule's character sheet. Um. Oh. Anyway, Think about what, what you want to do. What were you saying about not a meal? Um, uh, how do I put this? Uh, Railer is looking around to see who is kind of uninspired, um, who might be a good uh, dance partner in the future, shall we say. That sounds sexual. Might be a good <laughs> singing partner. That sounds less phallic. Um, in the and we've entered back into sexual. I missed it. I just want, I just want to know was what it? Was it the title? <laughs> throat There's singing? Just throat singing. What's Danzen doing? I want to know what our halfling man is. I just need uh, to know who doesn't have inspiration. That's all I need. Go ahead. <laughs> Danzen's off with like a, one of the crew and he's like pointing at one of the uh, life vests that they or not life vests but like one of the flotation things that's like on the craft presumably and he's like look look at all the neat little rafts they put around the uh, around the ship it's perfect you know I don't know how you're gonna fit on it though big guy and then uh, he like kind of elbows him in the knees um, <laughs> and then he like <laughs> walks off um, so yeah when we get to that island, uh, it, Kashi, you're the mission commander. I know you said uh, we might have to make our own choices, be a bit autonomous, but uh, my skill set does actually uh, depend a little bit on some coordination. So uh, if you need me to sneak around or something like that, point it out. Uh, uh, uh oh. Okay, still, I don't want to direct. You. So, Sam's um, personal just responsibility. So speaking of autonomous, uh, Sam turned into an automaton. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't just for me, huh? <laughs> my, uh, yeah. Mm, uh, mm. Yeah. Your your internet my, shit in is itself. Unstable. The entire. Oh, Can you hear no. me now? Sam, your internet's not the only thing unstable right now. I'll tell you that. Hey. <laughs> Uh, uh -oh. Can you can you say that again? What, what, it might be stable now. I don't think Sam is stable now. Oh no! Sam's never been stable. It's her internet we're concerned with right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. She's doing a really good impression of a portrait right now. <laughs> yeah, she probably uh, said something about a boy and a cracker and. She's sliding <laughs> off of it. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> well, then. I, I can't remember the phrase. Uh, boy, cheese done slid right off his cracker. There you go. Oh, shit, that's the one. Sorry. Okay. I, was of, uh, I was thinking of the other one. It's like, if I say the moon is made of cheese, you better grab your crackers. I <laughs> no. lost her. Oh, oh no. no. <clears throat> now I'm Hunter. <laughs> We're all uh, fucked up. Uh, gummit, Adam Sam. still has good hair. <laughs> it's okay, I'm you in the right place still. Anything. You are. Man, man, oh man. It's like the universe doesn't oh. want us to play. Mm. Either way, so I guess we made it. What are we doing now? <laughs> <laughs> well, so, um, as you guys are zooming along, you see the sun uh, beginning to sink. Uh, completely across you guys over the top. And begins to um, set... Uh, and you and <laughs> and uh, hear Mo call out, "Brace yourselves! If we're gonna, if that bear is gonna rock us, it'll be now." And uh, you guys, as you're sailing, all of a sudden, um, you feel a shudder <sighs> and a shake, and the ship drops like 15 feet, and then stabilizes and keeps going. <clears throat> it drops a little bit more. Pardon me. Uh, so, well, I'm not sure if we can maintain in the distance. You see, um, these three, uh, these four islands, almost in a in a ring of sorts. 
um, three of them around a central one. And uh, you see them coming up, but not fast enough. Not fast enough that you'll make it there before the ship hits the water. And mm -hmm. sure as shit, uh, you make splash down um, and have to start sailing in right as the sun begins to set. <clears throat> Mo seems disheartened that you weren't able to fly there, but uh, between her and the crew, they're able to sail you in gently. Uh, and quietly all the way to the central island. Mo says, okay. Well, go ahead. Just, just, a, just to be clear, on this map here where there's that little tiny dot in the middle, mm -hmm. that's the body of water that we're on? So this is the body of water that you're on out here. Um, this is the central island, and this little tiny island in the center of the water, in the center of the central island, in the center of the ring of islands, uh -huh. is where you're I supposed to go. I'm looking at a black screen right now. Of course you are. Same of these. <laughs> oh. But I can see it on the, the screen. <clears throat> Refresh. And then zoom out and then zoom in. Yeah. This is loading. Black as fuck still. Zoom out, zoom in. Nope, still dark. I'll look at it on the uh, stream. Great. Yeah. Oh, okay. I feel like this isn't uber important for us to know precisely, unless you're going to be having us <laughs> walk. You guys are going to walk, but it's just going to be by picking someone to lead you guys and rolling. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm not going to have you guys worry about tricking all the way. <laughs> Yes, so she's been a, she was able to uh, sell you guys. There was gonna be more to it, but just because of time, this is what we're doing. Uh, so she's able to sell you guys in. Um, this is where we this is where we disembark. Now, we were hoping to be able to sail right there, but unfortunately, that's not the case. However, we brought we had precautions planned. And uh, she gestures to a couple of her um, her crew, and they hoist a rowboat um, onto their backs and start walking down the fresh gangplank that has just been set down. We're going to need this. So Mo looks at you and says, we'll be joining you. I'm coming onto that island. There are no questions to be asked. If anybody tries to stop me, I'll end them myself. Are there any issues with that? And she looks at Tashi and Petra and Rupus. They all shake their heads. <clears throat> it's settled then. And uh, Mo and her two crewmen, uh, two crew people, um, crew persons. Just call them queer. Go ahead. The deck hands step off, uh, <laughs> carrying the rowboat. They're very, very burly individuals, both quite androgynous. You just can't tell anything about them except for the fact that they're freaking jacked uh, and they're they, and hidden under a rowboat so you really can't see much about them as you guys step off the boat the land around you is completely desolate uh just um <clears throat> kind of uh lava rock as far as you can see uh just not a speck of life and maybe a mile or two ahead of you guys you can see a great lake um i'm not even making anybody roll because pretty clear which direction you're going you guys are able to make it there pretty quickly um they place the rowboat in the uh, lake and it's just enough for all of you minus the deckhands uh, who stay to watch the line of egress um the rowing doesn't take very long maybe an hour by now it's near the middle of the night <clears throat> and you guys make landfall on an island in the center of this lake that is unlike the rest of the land lush green and beautiful teeming with life the sounds of insects and small animals which you didn't realize you had missed fill your ears as you approach uh, it's it's a comfortable place a warm place so some there's an energy that just fills you and makes you happy, elated, energetic. <clears throat> uh, looking at the map um, that was provided, 
Tashi is definitely able to tell which way to go. There we go. Skipping all the hard parts that we were going to do. And now, look at that. You guys quickly find yourselves um, approaching a small structure. It looks somewhat like a shack um, <clears throat> in the woods. Uh, clearing in the middle of the woods with just fireflies all over. You know, buzzing around left and right. Or lightning bugs for those of you from Missouri. And ahead of you, you see a shack with windows lit up, and you can see the shapes of people moving around inside. Oh, I certainly <clears throat> can. Okay, nobody make any sudden movements now. Well, I'm assuming like if Rupus, Rupus did cast without a trace, right? I'm sure. So can anyone give me a stealth roll? And did we just add 10 to it? Yeah. I mean, I'll be adding that to everyone's rolls, but you can if you'd like. Uh, need... so that's good. Solid 21. No big deal. Well, uh, it's only because cast without a trace. So I'm trying to get into everybody's stuff here. Ooh, Rubis can snake. All right, so um, everyone seems fairly sneaky as you guys approach. Uh, Petra does a vibe check, and she says that she can feel a concentration of energy on the other side of the building. The other side of the building. Okay. Um, if you guys don't mind, maybe I can uh, go check some of these windows. No objections? Yeah. Okie dokie. And do the old gnome um, in the, old halfling in the bush routine here? Yeah, the whole the old halfling in the bush, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except this time, it's not a... Uh, it's not a joke. Wait, let's see. Where's the, where's the arrow? Uh, Danzen's gonna hear in his head from Surge. Try and remember everything that they're wearing and how they look. And let me know. Okay. Or at least one of them. Rayla okay. kind of pipes up. I am currently wearing what would be known as a very comfortable undergarment of white with some brown pants. They're called my oh shit pants. As well as some soft, supple leather boots that are tied up using a fiber made from horse hair. Very, very delicate work to create those. Um, yeah, non scuffable the way that that leather is built. Non-scuffable, mm. is that the technical term? It is. I love that. I love that. Okay, uh, so Danzen, as you approach, um, you hear general merrymaking, just a few people, you know, maybe having a couple drinks, having a chat, uh, an occasional laugh. Um, seems to be a gentle ruckus. <clears throat> um, he's gonna keep moving his way up to the window, and like as he like gets like up closer, he like jumps forward onto his stomach, and then starts like snake crawling <laughs> like up to the window, and just like wriggling at a painfully slow pace until uh... he gets up to. The... <laughs> as you peek inside, you're able to see uh, a simple room. Um, maybe what thirty-five. Wait, sorry. Can you say one more time what the what the building resembles? Is it like a, yeah. like a hut or like a... As you approach from the outside, it looks almost like a little cottage, okay? Stone walls, uh, windows. To the north, you can... The north side, you can see kind of a little bit of a garden area and a little pond. Um, has a little chimney with some smoke coming out of it. Um, thatch roof. Looks pleasant enough, you know? As you approach and place mm. your hands on the, st on the stone windowsill and look inside, you see a room that fits its exterior you know it's maybe 35 feet square it's got wooden floors um, a few bunks strewn around it a fireplace on the other end of the room uh, warmly crackling away with it looks like a pot of something held uh, suspended over the fire there's a table near the center of the room that has some food stuffs um, a couple of candles uh, chests things that you would generally expect to see you do see that there's also a door 
Stop it. What are you doing? No. Sorry, sometimes I hate things Roll20 does. You see a door over in this direction. And the individuals that seem to be laughing and having a good time are these three. <clears throat> I think you can probably see all of them. This one is sitting on the edge of his yes. bed, or the edge of his bunk with his back to you, um, wearing a, a full set of plate armor um, and shining a long sword while laughing at uh, this individual who is laying on the ground trying to do something. It's like trying to move his body or, or grab something. It's weird, but he's laying on his back um, doing something weird. Well, this one's leaning back in a chair, um, his feet up on the table, drinking out of a Is mug, and just laughing at this goofball here. All of them look like this. Um, do they? Is it the full plate armor on one of them? All three of them are wearing three? full plate armor. Um, gotcha. Okay. Um, so after uh, after Danzen makes a stealthy approach, he's going to uh, crawl back to the. Uh, <laughs> until it's clear and, and then uh, make his way back to the group or actually the the new messaging like bracelets or whatever um does it does it like function you know pretty They're similar identical to the, to the old ones identical just oh, okay. up here. gotcha just up here <laughs> danzen's trying to find a way to pull it off he's like putting like matching like shitty things on his like right he's like trying on like matching like mismatched like twine like on his right hand, uh arm to like try and balance the aesthetic um but either way Slay. he's going to uh stay where he's at and then he's going to message back to the group um to tashi uh about the uh, about what's inside the armored guys the um food in the center open floor plan several bunks um yeah what did they look like uh oh yeah they uh, um they're they're tall and they look like Tashi, uh, but a little, little hornier, a little meaner. Um, I know both. Horny? It's terribly hard to do. Plus, I mean, maybe 20, not. I don't know. Plus, 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 Assuming Serge was able to understand Danzen's uh, description, you're just gonna hear for those that are near him, like under his breath, it's morphin' time. And then he's going to turn it into essentially an exact replication of them with disguise self. <laughs> uh, you guys look around and um, you don't see Mo anymore, but you see some bushes over here kind of rustle. She rolled a uh, 29 on stealth before the plus 10. So. What? Um, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so she has kind of slipped off in the bushes this way. Um, to kind of see what she can see. <clears throat> well, uh, Tashi says, well, anybody have any, uh, any y'all got any bright ideas what you want to do? Wow, Tashi sounds just like Mo. Um, <laughs> Look, not Sir, all people yes. with an accent sound the same, all right, you dunderhead? Someone's got to oh, churn that butter of yours. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> In some life, uh, I'm wearing an ermine coat and I have palace views. But since we're here, we gotta go in. I I feel like they're looking at each other with an inner sense of fire. They're thinking, how can I refuse this situation? I think we should just go in. All still wall. Surge is going to similarly <clears throat> do pretty much exactly what Danzen did and just like low crawl his ass up to the window. Either you all see any other entrances, or we think we can just mask that one door. Um, it looks like this door. There are windows. How big are the are the windows? Uh, the windows are about three feet tall, maybe a foot and a half, two feet wide. A person could conceivably jump through. Uh, Mo says, there's, there's a door on the back here. I got it covered. Okay. Uh, so... <clears throat> Surge is going to do Surge thing since he was told he could be autonomous. He's going to use uh, Cantrip Mold Earth right outside of the door and he's going to make it difficult terrain. Is that a 5 and foot or is that a 10 foot? I can't remember. 5 foot 
cube. Okay. So just literally thing right outside of the door. Right, I will play. Um, rough terrain. Keep going. And then he is going to cast a minor illusion can't trip. Well, he's going to wait for the team to get in place before he does this for that part. So he's going to wait and see if other people decide to essentially right. stack up next to the door. So uh, Tashi is going to suggest that Petra go and support Mo. I'm just going to make her way over here. Uh, she wants to take point on the door because she likes to bash stuff. Um, <laughs> she's going to have Rupus stay back and uh, provide range support. Um, I'm sure Stony would probably stay back a little bit to provide some uh, healing and rocks. He obviously picks up a whole pocket full of pebbles at this point and enchants them. Yeah, uh, Surge is going to suggest that Tashi maybe move one space south because the illusion is going to be interesting. All right. Uh, so uh, you then hear Mo position. Okay. Uh, and uh, you're going to hear, well, you're not going to hear anything because it's somatic material, but you're going to see uh, Surge kind of like take a piece of fleece out of a little pouch He's going to pull it apart, and then he's going to clap his hands together, and a thunderous, almost explosive noise sounds off about right here. That sounds essentially like a grenade going off, and he's going to hope that that alerts the group uh, to maybe start trying to attempt to run outside. It does. I'm that exact spell moment. descriptions. What's that? Sorry. I said I'm loving these spell descriptions. Right? I'm, it's I'm the best. That you're loving it. And I'm loving that you're loving that he's loving it. This is great. So much yeah, love. So there's there's a lot of stuff. So loved right. right now. Uh as that thunderous clap goes off, um this the sounds of Mary making stop uh and are replaced by the clattering of, of steel boots on the ground. Uh and oh. the Go ahead. And uh, what's the uh what are the odds that like um but, like as as everybody's like getting set up can uh can Danzen like just check to see if the like like very subtly check to see if the window was unlocked? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and roll side of hand. Oh baby. He's like I got plus forty three to that. <laughs> uh a twenty five. Now it wasn't unlocked, <laughs> but you are very you see the latch, the latching mechanism, and you are extremely confident that you could quickly and silently unlatch that window. Okay. Um yeah, I do have teased uh teased tools, uh thieves tools, uh thieves tools. Um, I like teased so... tools. We're sticking with that. Okay, he's got teased tools and he's gonna over his head he's gonna uh, and uh yeah love that. make sure it's unlocked and, and, and nice and like hinged perfect as uh as that happens uh so you have the window unlocked as it happens you guys hear the um tramping of the boots as one of the individuals comes charging out the door and makes it to about here before he realizes that he just ran past a bunch of people uh, and draws his weapon spinning around. Um, everyone roll for initiative. And I'll let you guys... Oh, uh, we'll let um, Surge and... We'll let everyone have one round on him, but we're going to roll initiative first. <clears throat> Can I get a... Ha uh... ha uh... Alright, so we have an You should have, and you did of Surge having a All the times Ooh, not great Oh, yeah, so Surge He's doing... 15 Railer at 17 Danzen, that's hot right there <clears throat> Too hot God Do dang. you have what my number was? It says it wasn't sent, but I think I've got a 17 for you Cool I'm happy. Yeah. Uh, Dan said the same thing for me. Seven. All right. Got to roll everyone else's Here's stuff. Give me one, one second. Night. 
This is definitely gonna be a, a stream for the for the memory book there. <laughs> hey, we got a place, that's all that matters. Alright. Good job, Stony. I agree. Alright, and I gotta get can someone open um Sam's real quick while I'm getting all this data put in? I got yeah. you. And rule for Tosh. Oh, okay. I'll raise you. <laughs> Oops. Or Petra the, the wrong, link. wrong direction. Um, Rupus. I don't know why it's calling. Got it, Dad. That's Thirteen. No, oh, I got it. <coughs> why does it say fate? Who's that? Seven. <laughs> that would be Tashi. I don't know why it says <laughs> fate. I'm on her fucking thing. <laughs> and then I need to roll for Mo. What's her? All right. So she's at a. And fate, since your character isn't taken off uh, of here, um, I'm going to use that for Mo. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it put because uh, yeah, I rolled it on Tosh's sheet. Happen. All right. All right. I think I've got everyone here. Let's auto roll for them. All right. So um, the the people who were right next to the door, um, as the this guy comes charging out, do have an opportunity to attack him with advantage. If you guys so choose. I'm so, gonna do a stabby stab. Surge Tashi and the bunny. No. Yeah, no bunny. Threatens that zone. No, this is not right. So I'll get Tashi's attack going. You have a rapier too? I feel like I just follow in your footsteps at every step, Jordan. This is bullshit. I know a 13's not gonna hit. Um, bear with me, I'm just trying to get Tashi opened up here. Playing way too many characters at once right now. <laughs> All right. Um, no, 13 does not hit. <clears throat> That's okay. Bonus action, Eldritch Blast. 17, uh, I'm sorry, 24 will hit. For a total of seven force damage. All right, you don't you get two blasts with Eldritch Blast at your level? Uh, I'm only two levels in Warlock, so I think no, I have to be fifth level to do two beams. Okay, so he takes your seven damage. Yeah, he does. Takes it, and it staggers him just a little bit um, as Tashi. Uh, draws her great axe, or probably already had it drawn, and takes a swipe at him um, with a nat 20. Oh, shit. So the 26 will hit. Uh, all right. I didn't realize that flying was off. Uh, for 15 base 30. damage, doubling that for 30 damage, uh, she... <laughs> Uh, cleaves this guy in two, just right off. Um, just splits him right down the middle. Uh, Darth Maul style. The guy falls into two pieces as he's turning around and trying to draw uh, his sword on you guys. And that'll bring us into actual initiative. Um, which we will get into next week. Not Ooh. next week, the week after. <clears throat> we will not be on next week. Uh, because I will be out of town. But we'll catch back up two weeks from now uh, when we continue on our journey to try to maybe bring back some fallen enemies and uh, activate some dimensional anchors and whatnot. Until then, though, we'd like to say thanks to Roll20 and D&D Beyond for the character sheets, the virtual tabletop, etc., etc., to Sirenscape for the sounds that I've had intermittently, maybe sometimes playing throughout the night tonight. Uh, big thank you to... Um, Twitch and to YouTube for hosting our videos, to the University of Washington and the VA, because without you guys wouldn't be doing this, or wouldn't have started doing this, we'd probably be doing it still if you guys went away. Anyway, um, and of course, big thank you to our viewers who aren't on tonight, because it's not our normal night, but we miss you guys. Finally, big thanks to my players, the three of you who are still here. Uh, it's been real, it's been fun, and at points it was real fun. So, um, y'all have a great night, and enjoy your long rest. <laughs>